the final boss man, and we're at PAX! Hi everyone, I am Kyle Bossman. I am the assistant director of The Final Bossman. I'm Ian Hink, I am the executive lead editor of The Final Bossman. And uh, here's what's happening today. Uh, this episode was almost thrown away. Uh, I went to PAX, uh, I shot for one hour, and was not happy with the result. Uh, is that fair to say, Ian? Oh, yeah. And you weren't wrong. <laughs> We almost threw this out. We almost said, you know what? Maybe no final bossman this week. Yeah. Uh, but then it's just like, hey, why don't we? Why don't we do director's commentary? Why don't we try to find something that was valuable in this episode, and then instead of throwing it away, and then make fun of it, and then make fun of it. Yeah. Why yeah. don't Why don't we just react to what's there? Uh huh. So we're doing director's commentary for this week's episode of the final bossman on the road. I'm on not the even. Road. It's got to be on the road. Cause Probably it's a good choice. Clearly yeah. below average quality. Yeah. Uh, Ian, one thing I never like doing a worse job on something I've already done. Right. And so for me to have a worse PAX episode than last year, which is one of last year's PAX episodes, like my favorite. Yeah. And so to me, I, I haven't seen it. To do a worse one crushed me. And so I, I, I this was rough. Uh, we can hit play. I feel that. I feel that. All right, hitting play. Coming to you live from PAX Prime in Seattle. Rough audio edit. I should maybe nail it out. Sure, if you want to. Nah. Um. So here I am. I mean, I got this haircut. Yeah. Oh God. What is with this haircut? Actually, pause again. Pause again. Let's let's talk about the haircut. So I did a bit. I was I was Macklemore in a sketch. I used my Macklemore impression. Macklemore. Okay. Yeah. So it was longer before. Yeah. We'll show the image right here. Okay. And then this is and so this was me shaving off what was Macklemore. So this is like the remnants of a Macklemore. Impression. So you went from something societally acceptable to looking like some kind of Travis Bickle like psychopath. Yeah, I chose psychopath over Macklemore. You're right. Which wow. I, I don't know. That's a statement. <laughs> we can play again. So just so, I got a lot of comments about my hair. And just so everybody knows, that's what was going on. Work at GameStop. Uh, this is much different. You're making fun of people who work at GameStop? Uh, kind of. I'm just talking about the difference between a PAX audience and an E3 audience. Right. It's the fans. Exactly. And then, oh man. Yeah, so basically, I mean, honestly, this episode is about me struggling with being a person who's games media. Right. Do you ever have that? No, I enjoy it. You enjoy being games media? No. Well, yeah. I don't know. It's fun. I don't have to... I, these are the... I wouldn't go to E3 or PAX, so if I go for free, I go. Yeah, I guess... Here's... What I'm talking about right now is, like, my guilt of, like, walking yeah. in front of line. Yeah. Right here. Here he is. Well, that's the thing. is like, I never... I never budge to the front of the line. I mean, maybe that's the difference, is I'm just not a bad person. Okay. Well, like, they, they want you to. They see your yellow badge, and they're like, oh, please, come So that's come how PAX works? Because yeah, I've only yeah, yeah. been to E3, where everyone's media. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so at PAX, there's people who pay there to be, like, oh, yeah. hundreds of dollars, whatever, yeah. whatever they pay. You're a monster. Yeah, and then you skip in front of their lines, and that sucks. And so basically, I wanted to make an episode about, like, what PAX is about for the media and for fans. What PAX is about. Right. I didn't really nail that down. Great cut there. Yeah, well, <laughs> the shot's not even in focus, so. Actually, so this part, this part I'm talking about, like, all the weird PR emails we get, because you get those, oh, too. Oh, yeah, right? I get those, too. I signed up, Damiani made me sign up for a PAX badge. I wish I had never done that, because <laughs> now I'm going to be getting emails for the rest of my life. Yeah, so, like, leading up to PAX, you get, like, 50 emails a day. Like, it's a just day. Like, Come check out our game. And, and there's, like, games I've never heard of, which is rad, because I love games I've never heard of, but... This part I like though. This part it makes sense to me. This argument, where it's just like I'd rather just go walk the floor, yeah, and look at games instead of just window shopping. Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like meetings, basically. Yeah. It's not E3. It's there's not, it's not full it's of true. news, but the news that does come out of E. Those. <clears throat> there we go. Ooh, nice little mistake. Up. Up. Um, what's funny is uh, the camera guy Justin. Is, uh -huh. He does lots of stuff for Escapists. He's not just a camera guy. Okay. Uh, this is my first time meeting him. Was doing uh. this shoot. Uh. So as I stare into the lens, I'm also staring at Justin for the first time ever. So there's not a whole total comfort there either. Yeah. Oop, another little mistake. Oh, oh. Okay, let's just cut up right on it. <laughs> so I think we're about to go do a behemoth interview. Okay. Yeah, so we are. I'm now here with Aaron Young Johan, who is lead scenario director. Director now. Uh, uh, a designer. At least. I messed up his title. Didn't even know what his title was. That's fine. Yeah, he's actually a great guy. We shouldn't talk over this interview too much because I actually really I like this okay. stuff. Okay, gotcha. Why does the behemoth care so much about PAX in particular? 
Uh, we are all about fans, and this is where the fans come. It's not just insular businesses and, and, and other developers, although obviously there's lots of developers to talk to here. It's, this is the place that fans get to come and check out our games, and it's a way for us to early on see how they respond. We've got little note cards that people have been very diligent about filling out, and we take that early on, and that becomes a core part of how we develop our titles. So after the demo, people are filling out note cards, you and then someone's going to read cards. through each of Did those Did you get the note cards? cards? Yeah, we Absolutely. got beautiful note cards. All right, I'll put one. the note cards in. And if you draw fancy little pictures on the back of it, we'll appreciate that too, and probably stick it on our fridge. We've done it before. It's too late for those people. What's that? They, these people watching this can't oh, no. put it. Yeah, 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 sorry. Back Good back save. Back Not awkward at all. I don't, I don't know if you can answer this question in particular, <laughs> but like, this seems very expensive. It's because uh, I so think maybe, I appeared really unsupportive in that moment. I think and, that caught him off guard. He's like, mm, is he making fun of me? Yeah. I wasn't. Aaron, not these, yeah. Aaron, I was not. I didn't mean to make fun of you. These people don't care what you have to say. Yeah. I'm trying to share it with people at home so they can appreciate it too. But uh, like, how much of that marketing professionally? Marketing you shouldn't talk about marketing budget this. to an interviewee. I mean, this is, this I, yeah, I give myself that. What we do, and I, what I hear is that we break even, which is good. Um, you know, just about, and which is, I mean, our show. We've been really lucky that you know our store is doing really well, and everybody comes through and checks things out. But I mean, I, I think we're just so enthusiastic about showing it as, in the best way possible that it it's worth taking whatever hit that we end up taking, and and thankfully we've been. Our games have done well enough that we've been able to, to do that. It, it brings the, the polish uh, that we've tried to bring to every game, uh, but also the humor and tries to make a strategy game that anybody can sit down and play. And I, I mean, we'll do B-roll of the, the board. God damn it. Bro. Yeah, so show the B-roll. Show uh, the buttons. Like, how, look how cool this stuff is, though. Super yeah, simple. that is I mean, pretty it's, cool. It's a game of positioning. So it doesn't really, we don't ask you to pick a guy pick an ability and pick a target, all you got to do is just move your guys around and then situationally, depending on where everything lays out, that'll control the action. What advice would you give to other exhibitors coming to PAX? I, I think it's, it's best to remember why we're in it. Like, I mean, we're all, we're all kids that grew up liking video games just a little too much, weren't able to let go, and we wanted to do something that we loved. And these fans, you know, they come here and they've got their costumes and they're, you see, they're barely controlling, they're running as they're going along through the hall and we just have to remember that, that enthusiasm and, and bring it to the show and just go, wow, hey, check this out. This is really cool. I think you're going to like it. it it's, it's something we love to play, and that's why we're making it so that you'll be able to play it too. That's the episode for this Wait, week. Wait, so can you put a space uh, there? Yeah, what? look, at, I'm like searching for a thought anyway as we conclude. Yeah. So basically, I guess, Ian, what I wanted to say with this episode is that like I think it's really cool the behemoth like sets up these arcade cabinets that only appear for fans that walk by. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Like that wasn't there for me to do a show about. Right. That was just there for people to go and wait in line and like touch. Well, Pax like, is for real people. Pax is for real people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I like kind of wanted to talk about. Like, what is the point of Pax? And it's just for human beings to go and check out these things. And so I felt weird like having like secret closed door meetings at yeah. Pax. I think I got olive oil in my eye. From what? What did you eat just then? I made some chicken and potatoes earlier. Okay. Um, but I guess that was it. I guess that was the point of the episode that never came across in the actual, like, what I said with a microphone in my hand. Yeah. By the way, look at that stupid microphone. Normally we have a way bigger one. Way bigger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes out the bottom more. We have, like... The, oh, the, the longer, thing. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's corded, too. It does look a little small. Yeah. And, and you were shooting on a 5E... Yeah. Or 5D, five, five I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm playing too much D&D. Yeah, yeah, 5D. You know, just a little regular camera, basically. Yeah. Well, it looks good. The, the depth of field is good. So, so I want to say, I guess, uh, what do I want to say? What do you want to say about PAX? PAX? Yeah. PAX is cool. It seems like cool announce Like, the, the, the... Seems like sometimes the most cool announcements come out of PAX. Because it's, like, for the fans. So it's like... Yeah. It's like, oh, hey, Bloodborne, February 5th. Boom! You know? No, that, that, that kind of stuff. That didn't happen at PAX, though. That was at PAX? That was at the pre-TGS thing. Pre-TGS thing? Yeah. Sony had that whole press conference for T their pre-TGS. During PAX? During PAX. Huh. Yeah. When's TGS? TGS is in two weeks. Right, so that... What? I don't know. Do you think they planned that? That's PAX. Well, it wasn't at... They weren't in Seattle when they made that announcement. That explains why it was at, like, 11 p.m. Yeah. Well, whatever. whatever. Anyway, that different was example that was of episode. cool things in yeah. PAX. Yeah, 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 exactly. I, yeah, that's it, dude. Like, PAX has, like, people playing board games all night. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, so I felt weird being there, basically, as, as somebody with an MDA on his badge. MDA. 
Yeah. Alright, let's see if you can get this ending right. Okay. There you go. Come um, on. Anyway, that's that. the episode for this week. I'll be back in my office next Wednesday, back at my desk. I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Okay. Uh, Why do you keep that? Why do you keep that in there? <laughs> nice. Just saw a guy who's wearing my hoodie in the background. Strange, strange experience. Uh, <laughs> I just bought this at Target, by the way. Twenty-five dollars. Not okay. bad. Sorry, buddy. Uh, the reason was, I, I was wearing the same hoodie I wore last year for last year's PAX episode, and I'd be like, "What is? Why does he always wear that hoodie at PAX?" Anyway. Fascinating. Thanks. Terrible episode. Just oh man. That wasn't an episode. That was an on the road. Uh, okay. So it was a pretty good on the road. You're kind of selling your on the road short. <laughs> Some of the previous ones weren't weren't this. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Ian, thanks for doing All right. uh, that. Everybody, we'll have a regular, real, legit episode of The Final Boss one next week. Thanks for watching slash listening. Yeah, thank you for listening. Bye.